In the first section of 3.1, you saw how we can find systems of equation solutions by graphing. And we're going to continue that topic, but this time we're going to be using our graphing calculator to help us find those points of intersection. And we're going to be doing that with data, and that's going to require us to be able to create a line of best fit, and we call that linear regression. So. I want to start out with a graph in here, and I'm just going to put some dots together like a scatter plot. So we're going to say we have this is our data, and you can see that there is a positive correlation, which means that there would be a uh, slope with a positive line. Um, we get positive correlations when the uh, y coordinate is increasing as the x coordinate is increasing. So let's say if our y coordinate was time and our, excuse me, our x coordinate was time and our y coordinate was like number of people, then this relationship where the number of people is increasing as time increases would show that we have an increasing population or a growing population. So I'm just going to sketch a line of best fit. We'll pretend the graphing calculator did this. So this blue trend line or line of best fit would represent an increasing population. And then I'm also going to have a trend line that's showing a decreasing population. So you can see that as time increases or as time goes on, the number of people is decreasing or getting lower, which is a negative correlation. So that causes our line of best fit to have a negative slope. So this would show a declining, well, let's spell that right, declining population. Now remember that when we look at a graph, the solution to the system of equations is where those two lines intersect. So right here, at this intersection point, it's the solution to those system of to that system of equations. So the intersection point is the solution to the system of equations. Since our two equations are representing the population of this orange data and the population of the blue data, what happens when we graph these two and find their intersection is this ordered pair right here would represent the time and number of people where the populations of these two cities are the same. So I'm just going to put it represents the time and population where the cities are the same size. Okay, so what I want to do next is go through all the steps to get the data in the calculator and to find the um, intersection points. And I'm going to, going to be using data that is on the back side of this handout. So I'll kind of be flipping back and forth a bit and also using my calculator. So you want to make sure that you have your graphing calculator available so that you can work along with me to get this done. Okay, to start with, whenever <clears throat> excuse me, we enter data, we always go to the stat menu. So I'm going to put stat. And then we're going to choose number one, which is edit. Now, since we're going to be working with two sets of data, we're actually going to have three lists going on. Our L1 is still going to be the independent variable. That's going to be our X value. Usually, that's going to be time. 
And then in L2 and L3, we will put our dependent variables. So if you flip to the back side of your paper, you'll see this data. So the time here is going to be our independent variable. That will be L1. And then we're going to have two different dependent variables. So we'll put one of them in L2 and one of them in L3. So we'll say L2 equals dependent variable as well as L3. That's going to allow us to have more than one scatter plot going on our graph at the same time. So that will be something that's new to you. To get our plots set up, we are going to go to the stat plot. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that data entered. So we have things to work with, actually. So I'm going to put on my calculator. Let's see. And I'm going to go to stat, edit. Now remember that in order to clear that data, we go up to the top, push clear, and down to the bottom. Oh, somebody has renamed my list. L1. You won't have to do this. I should have checked my calculator before I started. Okay, so I'm going to clear out my list. Clear, go back down. Go up to the top, clear, go back down. Okay, so I'm going to put my data in L1. That's going to be the year. And I'm going to write down where I'm putting things. So L1 is going to be the year. And then I'm going to put my L2 in uh, for Metropolis, so L2, and I'm going to put Gotham City L3. So we'll just put all of that data in there. So L1 is going to be the years. And it tells me here, I, as I'm typing in 1950, I realize that's not right. Let X be the number of years after 1950. So I'm going to just change this to x equals 0, x equals 10, x equals 20, x equals 30, x equals 40, x equals 50. So I'll do 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. In L2, I'm going to put Metropolis data. So. And in L3, Gotham City. Make sure that you have the same number of data values in each of your lists, or the calculator gets real mad. Okay. Pause the video and keep putting in data if you're not quite ready to move on. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up the plots. To set up the plots, I'm using the stat plot menu, which is the second for y equals. So I'm going to go to second stat plot. And I'm going to be using two different plots. So I'm going to set up plot one and I'm going to set up plot two. Okay. So I'm going to write the instructions. To set up the plots, we're going to go to stat plot. And just so you know, that is second for y equals. And then for plot 1, I'm going to put metropolis. So I'm just going to make it blue. So plot 1, I am going to make sure that is turned on. And we're going to choose the top left graph picture, which I'll show you in a moment. Make sure your x list says L1 and your y list says L2. For plot 2, plot 2 is going to be my Gotham City. 
and again I want it to be on. I'm going to choose the top left graph and I'm going to make my X list still be L1 because I'm using the same X values but my Y list is going to be L3. Now I'll show you how to do that. The way that you access L3 is you push the second button and then uh, the number 3 on the keypad. So I'll show you that. So plot 1, so I'm going to go into plot 1 and I want to turn it to on and we choose the top left graph. X list says L1, Y list says L2 and I've got the little uh, kind of donut looking bars on there and then I'm going to markers, then I'm going to go to plot 2 Nope, plot 2, enter and I'm going to turn that to on for the type I'm choosing the top left the X list already says L1 the Y list needs to say L3 so I push the second button and then literally the number 3 on my keypad so second L3 and if you'd like you can choose change your mark to a different type that way you can tell your two scatter plots apart when you're looking at your graph okay. so that part is set up then we're going to plot um, our first equation. So you have to do this kind of very specifically in order. So we're going to go to stat, then we're going to arrow over to calc, and then we're going to choose number four, linreg, ax, well it's a little lowercase a, ax plus b, and then this is where our instructions get different a little bit from last time. Before we hit enter, we're going to type L1, comma, L2, and then we're going to hit enter. So you may not know where to find those buttons. The L1 is the second and then the number one. L2 is the second button and then number two. And the comma is above the seven. Okay, so let me show you that. So we want to go back to our home screen. Whenever we're doing something and we want to go back to regular calculator mode, you can either turn your calculator off and back on, or you can go second quit. And that takes us back to the home screen. So I'm going to go through these steps. I'm going to push stat, stat right here, stat, arrow over to calc, and then I'm going to choose number four. Before I hit enter, I'm going to type L1, comma, L2. So for L1, I do second and then the number 1. And then the comma is right here above the 7, so comma. And then L2, I do second and the number 2. And then I hit enter. Now that gives me the numbers I need to make my equation, but I still have to write my equation. So this gives me my first equation. And the screen says y equals ax plus b, and then it tells me a equals a number 20.42 dot dot dot, b equals a number 322.61 dot dot dot. It gives me um, an r squared equals 0.96 dot dot dot, and an r equals 0.98. The first equation, though, only uses the a and the b. And we're just going to round because I don't want to write out all those numbers on the video. So we're just going to make it y equals. And then we put the number for a, 20.4, it would round up 20.43x. And then plus b, which would be 322.6, it would round to 0.62. So that's my equation. Now before you move on, this is really, really important. You have to store it before you move on to finding your second equation. So we need to store it. Before moving on. The calculator can only keep track of one equation at a time unless you store it in y equals. So 
we need to store it before we ask it to find another one or it will forget this one. So to store it, we go to y equals. I know that's worn off on most calculators. It's this button here. So we go to y equals. Then you're going to clear out uh, anything that's in your y1. Really, you should clear out anything that's anywhere, but we'll just clear out what's in y1. Just make sure you got nothing else going on in there. And then we push the button that says VARS, variables. It's right here, VARS and we choose number five statistics. And then we arrow over twice to equation. And we choose number one, which is reg regression equation. So I just choose number one, and there's my equation stored right in there. Then I can move on to finding the second equation. So to find the second equation, I use the same steps. So I go stat over to calc, and then choose number four, which is linreg ax plus b. This time, though, I have to tell it to use L1 and L3. So L1, comma, L3 because that's where my L3 my L3 is where my other data is stored that went with Gotham City and then enter so remember we go back to our home screen so second quit and then we push stat arrow over to calc choose number four remember to do L1 comma L3 so L1 was second and then the number one right there comma is above the seven and then L3 second and the number three and then enter so that's going to give us our second equation now before we move on to anything else we're going to store that. So to store your second equation, what you're going to do is go into y equals and you're going to go to go to y2 equals. So I push the y equals button, arrow down to the y2 so I went to the y equals, arrow down to the y2, and then I do the vars, number five, arrow over to equation, choose number one. So I push vars, number five, arrow over to equation, choose number one, and there's my second equation. So now I have both equations stored in my y equals screen. And now I think I'm ready to look at the graph. So what I expect to see on my graph is kind of what I saw on my, you know, um, well, we'll see. We'll see what we see. To look at the graph is the same way that we did before. We're going to push the zoom button, and then we're going to choose number 9, which is zoom stat. So the zoom button is in the top row right here, zoom. And you can just push the number 9 on your keypad, 9, and it will graph that graph for you, both scatter plots and both lines. Now when I ask you to sketch that on paper, I literally expect you to just draw a rectangle and sketch what you see. So we would just draw a rectangle that represents my graphing calculator screen. I see an axis here and then I'm going to draw my one line that goes like this. I'm going to draw my other line that goes roughly like this. 
it's not perfect. And then I'm going to draw my data values on there, approximately where I see them. I think that's pretty close. Now the whole reason that we did this was so we could find that intersection point because in our examples it says when will the populations of the two cities be the same? Well the populations of the two cities will be the same is going to happen where the graphs intersect. So it's going to happen right here. But the calculator can find that point for me. I don't have to do that by hand. What we're going to do is we're going to ask it to find the intersection. Now on this particular graph, I am able to see the intersection point on my calculator screen. If you cannot see the intersection point on the calculator screen, the calculator cannot find it for you. So I'm just going to put, uh, when we find the intersection, it must be visible on the screen. If not, you will need to adjust the window. And the place that you adjust the window is on the window button. It's right here, window. There's really only four numbers that we're going to be possibly changing. They are x min, x max, y min, and y max. So these four numbers are really the only thing that you would ever mess with. So I'll show you what that looks like. On your calculator screen, if your lines are not, if your intersection is not showing, like maybe I have something that goes like this, and I know that they're going to cross somewhere over here, but I'm not sure, like I'm not seeing it on my screen. If I need my window to go taller this way, I'm going to make the Y max a higher number. If I need to move my screen over that way, I'm going to make my X max a higher number. And so kind of by, you know, that pattern, this, if I need to see lower, I will make my Y min lower. And if I need to see further to the left, I'm going to make my X min lower. Okay. So back to the graph. To get back to the graph, we just push the graph button. And what I'm trying to find is this point right here where those two graphs intersect. So the directions for finding that intersection, I'll put over here. We're going to be pushing, we're going to be working with this calc menu right here. I don't know if you can read that, but it's the second button for trace. So I need to use calc, which is second trace. So I'll go second trace, and that gives me this menu. I'm going to choose number five, which is intersect. So I choose number five, and it's going to take me right back to the graph. And really, all I need to do is hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. So I'll show you. Enter, enter, enter. And it's going to tell me that the intersection is at x equals some number, y equals some number. And we'll talk about which part of that um, answer, or which part of that intersection is the answer when we get into working our example a little bit further. Okay. So now we have all the steps written out and we've done all of the things. We'll just review them as we go to answer these questions. So um, we already put our data in. We actually already have the equation for Metropolis and Gotham City, but I'm just going to show you again how to calculate those. So we had stored Metropolis in L2. So to get the equation, we are going to go to the stat menu, 
over to calc, and we want number 4, linreg. And then we have to tell the calculator where the data is. The x values were in list 1, the y values were in list 2. So we'll go second and then number 1 to get list 1. So second 1, comma, which is above the 7, second 2 for list 2. And then we're going to hit enter. The problem asks us to round to the nearest hundredth. So when I write my equation, it's going to be y equals, choose the, the number for the a coordinate to be this coefficient, and then plus b, choose the number for the b. So it's going to be y equals 20.43x plus 322.62. Now to get the equation for Gotham City, Gotham City is in L3, so I'm going to again do stat, arrow over to calc, choose number 4, linreg. Now I need L1 and L3, so I do second number 1 for L1, comma, second number 3 for L3, and I'm going to round to the same hundredths place. So it'll be y equals this number, negative 26.27x plus the b number, 2,634.05 when you round. Now I did not go ahead and store each of those because they already were stored. They're in the y equals. And then when we go to the graph to find the intersection point, remember those steps are to do second trace. So second, this button here, trace, choose number five, intersect, so number five, and then enter, 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 enter. And then the intersection point will be 49.49 comma 1,333.5. 8, 0 when we round. So 49 point, oops, I guess it would be 0 0.50 when we round to the nearest hundredth, and then 1, 3, 3, 3, point eight zero when we round. So when we put our data in our calculator, remember the x values were the years after 1950. So our x value here is years after 1950. And our y value, our y values were the population of Metropolis and the population of Gotham City. Since that is the place where the two intersect, that's going to be the population when the two populations are equal. So I'll just label it population because it, it's for both of the cities because it's that intersection point. So the blank here says after how many years will the population be the same? Well it's 49 and a half years but technically that's still in the 49th year so I am going to say after 49 years the populations will be the same and then they want to know what year that happens. Since x was the number of years after 1950, then 49 years later it would be 1950 plus 49, which makes 1999. So in 1999, the populations will be the same. My suggestion to you is when you finish one of these problems, you go ahead and turn off the plots. And if you'd like to, you can clear out your lists. 
I'll show you how to turn those plots off. It's very similar to turning them on. So we go to um, second y equals and you go in to plot one and you turn it to off by hitting enter. And then you can go into plot two and turn it off by hitting enter. If you want to clear out your equations, you just go to y equals, push clear, clear. If you want to clear out your lists, you go to stat, edit, up to the top, top name of the list, hit clear, arrow down, up to the top of the list, hit clear, arrow down, up to the top of the list, hit clear, arrow down. Um, one other thing you might consider when you finish these is setting your graph back to the standard viewing window. So I'll write that down. Um, that is in the zoom menu. So in the zoom menu, you can choose number six, Z standard, and then your calculator will be set back to the regular grid and ready to graph something that's not a statistics problem.